Today, I'd like to ask and answer one simple question, okay? Is dead by daylight toxic? Now, a quick distinction. I have very little interest in whether or not the dead by daylight community is toxic. I am more talking about the video game itself on whether the game itself is toxic. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I think that there's there are some things about the way Dead by Daylight is designed, the gameplay experience that you're going to have and the interactions that you have with other players in the game that can bring out more frustration than some other multiplayer games. And I wanted to have a discussion about this today. So let me know what your thoughts are, whether you think Dead by Daylight is toxic. This isn't a pointing the fingers at other people kind of thing or a this community is better than that community. I, you know, I have a bias as having been a game developer and a game designer. I think there are design elements in the game that create that. So let's get into whether or not Dead by Daylight is toxic. So it is an asymmetrical game. By default, it is something that is imbalanced, right? There are four players against one player. And there's going to be, no matter what, if you get into multiplayer games, PvP games, there's always going to be some level of emotional investment that leads to toxicity, right? So it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a PvP game of some, of some kind, um, you're going to have the interaction, right? Whether it's a FPS, uh, an MMO with PvP, anything like that. If people are involved, the psychological challenges of being a person are going to be involved in that as well. So there's going to be people that don't like losing. There are going to be people that want better things from other people or want other people to do different things that fit their own narrative. But specifically asymmetrical games, there is a baseline that makes that kind of behavior and thought process uh, the way that it is, right? Because it's so hard to measure the difference between survivors and killers, you don't really actually know whether something's unfair or not, right? And everyone's gonna give a different perspective other than nurse, everyone agrees nurse is a problem, uh, I think there's going to be situations where people feel like the way they play the game is causing them to be frustrated. So I think the first one to talk about is a feeling of helplessness. In horror games, a feeling of helplessness is one of the most common tools that gets used, right? If you think about uh, Silent Hill, early Resident Evil, any first person um, horror game, a feeling of helplessness is very powerful in making you feel afraid, right? So, I think when Dead by Daylight was first created, it kind of utilized that horror tool of making you feel helpless, right? The monster is so much be better and stronger than you that you're just going to, uh, you're just going to lose. You can't win. Your only option is to run away. Um, so, I think they used that a little bit in this game. Um, the first one is going to be with the hook states, right? Um, one, there are some killers that you just can't beat. Right? I think Nurse is one of them. There's several killers, like if you get caught out in the open against a Huntress, or you get caught in the open with, against like a Bubba at full health, um, a, uh, uh, a Bubba you see on screen here, you're just gonna go down, right? It doesn't matter what your skill level is, what your planning is, what your strategy is. In a PvP situation, there are many cases in Dead by Daylight where you are completely outmatched and outclassed, and there's nothing that you can do to prevent it. And that is a very known and well-studied part of psychology um, that causes frustration in people. You have this issue where you have a perceived sense of power or you're responsible for something and there's nothing that you can do uh, to influence it or change it. I think that happens, right? So people that they get caught out in Red Forest out in the open against a Huntress, that can cause people to feel very strong emotions about whether or not their, uh, their situation is working. But I think the other element that, that feeds into that is the hooking. If you are on hook, there's like one or two ways you can get off hook, things like deliverance. But in general, you need another player to come get you, right? There is no way, other way to get off the hook uh, other than like a few perks uh, in specific situations. You can't get yourself off hook, um, other, you know, like whatever. So you have to have someone come get you. So there are situations where that event that you are re relying on for your own safety doesn't happen right? So you get left on hook. This is what I call it first hook death hook, but it is, <laughs> it's, it's painful where you go into one chase or maybe in that situation where you're up against a killer that you're outmatched in, right? You find some situation where the killer wins every time. 
Um, and you get put on hook, and then no one comes to get you. This doesn't happen too much in other PvP games, right? You may be on one site in Valorant, and you get five-man rushed, and you get owned, and oh well, you got outnumbered, or whatever. But there's no situation where, like, you know, someone runs by and freezes you, like freeze tag, and someone else on your team has to come get you and unfreeze you, and there's nothing you can do to fix it. I think things like that lead to Dead by Daylight feeling very toxic by design. Uh, things like slugging, like you see on screen, you get left on the ground, and aside from a few perks, you have to wait for someone to come get you. And sometimes you wait a long time. There are situations where killers will camp you on hook, or they will leave you on the ground, and there's nothing you can do. Right, so there are times where I call them like hands off the keyboard or hands off the controller situations where your input is meaningless. You just sit there and there's nothing you can do. I think these things cause a lot of frustration uh, in the game. They definitely add to the goofiness of Dead by Daylight, but they can definitely um, they can definitely lean to you having more toxic behavior or bringing out emotions in you that are more toxic. Uh, the next thing that I think that makes Dead by Daylight uh, by nature, by its design, more of a toxic PvP game is that it is multiple games in one. And what I mean by this is that most games, especially if they're PvP, objective-based, whatever, um, you have you have one major game and and several ways to play it, right? There's different strategies you can employ, um, but it, it really is one game with one objective and one idea. But I think that there are two very distinct play styles in Dead by Daylight. Um, one that's more competitive and one that's more immersive survivor ho like survival horror game. So you have people that uh, like to hide. Uh, they play immersed. They use the vision. They play slow. They have this pacing idea where they want to bring out uh, very safe interactions between them and the killer. And so they play slower. They play more immersed. And they play it like a horror game. But then you also have people that play it more like a an objective based PvP game, uh, which is you are you have a resource which is the amount of hook states that you have as a survivor or as a killer, how many hooks you have to hook before every survivor is dead. Then you have a certain, number of, uh, a certain number of generators that need to get done, and then you have to power the exit gates and get out, right? So you have these resources that you can play with. You need to have a high uptime as survivors, a high uptime of being on generators and completing them so that you're getting them done in time, right? That's your objective as a team to accomplish as a killer, you have a certain number of like time between hooks, right? So if your chases are taking too long, they're getting gens done, your resource is progressing slower than their resource, at all the survivors escape, that sort of thing, right? So you have this kind of objective-based, time-based interaction, even though there is no official timer until the end game starts, there is an unofficial timer if the game is being played competitively in that you really want to have people doing generators on the survivor side and you want to be aggressively hooking people and shutting down the survivors on the killer side. The issue comes is when those two people end up in the same game. Um, so you have a situation where maybe, you know, the half your, your team on survivor side wants to play more horror immersed, or maybe they're newer and they play it that way. And they're, the other half of your team, two survivors, plays it more objective-based PVP, time is of the essence. Right, And because there isn't really a formal definition on which one is the way the game is supposed to be played, it's very open-ended in that. I think that clash of ideals creates toxicity, right? So you have people that are like, what are you doing? Why are you running around? Why don't you get on a generator, uh, right? Or like, you know, I'm just hiding the killers here. I don't know where he is. It's a stealth killer, right? And so you have that kind of contention where those two groups of players are clashing and it causes toxicity in its own way. So you have hide and seek, you have resource competition, you have PVP, and some people get immersed. Um, I would also say on top of that, sometimes you get situations where uh, the killer likes to farm and survivors don't want to, or maybe people want to, uh, you know, they want to be goofy and have like a joke. I've seen like four shirtless Davids, you know, Congo line across the middle of the map. And then, you know, as the killer, maybe you enjoy that, or maybe you just want to play the game. Right, that creates that contention, but because neither of those, right, if you were playing, um, you know, high-rated uh, you know, MOBA gameplay and people were just kind of making Christmas trees in the corner, that if you're playing high level, you want to play competitive, that would frustrate you. But if you're trying to have fun and make Christmas trees in the corner and people are taking it seriously and they want you to stop and play the game, 
that again, you have two different ideals that are clashing and creating that toxicity. Uh, the next thing that I would say that makes toxic De Dead by Daylight by design uh, more toxic than most PvP games is the fact that uh, fighting dirty is something that is, it may be outwardly frowned upon, but it is something that is strategically viable, right? What I mean, what do I mean by fighting dirty? Tunneling, which is focusing one player over and over until they're dead. Camping, which is uh, forcing, you know, getting a player on hook and then standing on top of them or standing on top of a generator or locking someone in the corner of the map and then standing there and not letting them leave, right? So forcing that. Um, and then obviously any kind of expressive things that you'd have in other PvP games, teabagging, bullying, whatever it is. Uh, but you have this idea of tunneling and camping that is strategically viable and in many cases is your best strategy, right? So if you're someone that has an insta down like uh, a chainsaw or maybe your ghost face, put someone on a hook. You now have this objective that survivors have to interact with. They have to go save that person on the hook. They have no other choice. It has to happen. So ghost face can sit behind a wall. And when that person who has to go unhook that person shows up, you can stalk them, expose them, one shot them, put them on the hook, go back behind the wall, right? It is in your benefit strategically to do these things. And it's kind of like on the, the player's, uh, yeah, I, I guess, code or their own honor to not do these things. So I think stuff like that being, you, you know, not outwardly punished and in some cases mainly incentivized, right? Like if you, like there are times where tunneling and camping is your best option as killer because there's so many survivors, uh, maybe if all four survivors are alive and you have to go somewhere else uh, or you have, you stay on that one person or maybe if someone's about to transition hook states and you want to get that hook state transition so you camp the hook, stuff like that by game design is encouraged because you get strategic benefit for doing it. I think that is another thing that really uh, kind of adds to what can be the toxicity of Dead by Daylight. The next thing is I would say, uh, in general, there probably needs to be some inspection into... This one's hard because one, is, it's hard to define and it's also hard to avoid, but I would say that there are some design elements, like game design elements, that in, in some cases create toxicity that normally wouldn't be there, right? A good example for me is uh, the design, the game design of the killer Plague. Plague is a killer that is um, kind of takes advantage of a lack of, of, of awareness in survivors. I think Legion's the same way. So Plague has an ability that can infect you. When you become infected, you can no longer heal. You're down one hook state. Uh, in Dead by Daylight, you have, two hook, you have two health states. You go healthy to injured to downed and you're on the ground and the killer can pick you up and hook you. Then they have deployables all over the map, which are these cleansing pools. You can then interact with these cleansing pools and remove the uh, the added element of the, the the whatever infection that you have. And that allows you to heal again. And in many cases, if you weren't injured, it will take you back to full health. However, the downside is that if you cleanse, you can then give the corruption power to the killer, which allows her to have basically a machine gun that she can fire in all directions. So the correct uh, strategy against a killer like Plague is to never cleanse, right? You may be down a, a, a health state, but the killer can never activate their machine gun power and you can just do all the gens and exit. So if you're aware of that, you can avoid having that all together. But if you're not, you're not aware of that, and you're, you go around like, hey, I want this sickness to go away and you just cleanse it, you're now making the killer stronger and hurting your teammates in that case, which can cause more rifts between the players. It should feel like when the killer is doing things right, the survivor always has a self-preservation that is aligned with the goals of the team and you shouldn't have to like have this extra element of like i need to intentionally stay sick so that you know i think elements like that game design elements like that probably need to be addressed um to to remove that kind of frustration i think there have been situations of like this in most pvp games uh if you look at yorick from league of legends he used to be called the fun killer which is basically the playing against him wasn't fun and playing him wasn't fun uh, he was very unfun in both directions to play and to play against, and they ended up reworking him for that reason to make it so the gameplay was a little more engaging on both sides. And I think that they should put more effort into uh, the killer designs in Dead by Daylight to ensure that that happens, that both the aggressor and the aggressee have fun and, and have a fun interaction. And I think there are several situations and character designs in Dead by Daylight that don't, they're not good examples of that interplay between the two parties, right? I think either there are some killers that 
like I would argue like artist, which is only fun for artists or not fun at all for the killer. Uh, or it's only fun for the survivors. It's not fun for both, right? So that, that kind of interaction is kind of gone and missing, which I think is really frustrating. The other thing is, let's talk about DCing and giving up. Um, it seems to be more prevalent in Dead by Daylight than in most PvP games. You still have, no matter what competitive game you play, I don't even care if you're on like a Roblox server or something, when people are involved, you're going to find situations where People feel like they don't have power anymore, so they're going to let go of their input. They're going to let go of their keyboard. They're going to let go of their controller. As we talked about before, maybe they're being slugged. Maybe they're being left on hook, or maybe they just don't want to play against a specific killer. Maybe they hate going against Plague, or they hate going against Bubba, or whoever it is. Then they just quit, or they give up. Um, it does seem like in Dead by Daylight, this happens more than most PvP games. You have people that, on first hook, they'll try to Kobe on purpose let themselves die and they're out of the game or people DC right away. They'll take the DC penalty and they'll just leave and never come back. But if you are against a killer that's playing the competitive way, like we discussed, having that fourth person gone is basically a death sentence. You, you won't really have enough players available to win the game. So once that person's gone, the game's over. You can't really, uh, you can't really do anything. Now, this is something that gets addressed differently in different communities. Dota 2 has a different solution for it. League of Legends has a different solution for it. Rainbow Six, uh, you know, Counter-Strike, everyone has a different solution for it. But there's a commonality in most high-level competitive games, um, if you want to treat Dead by Daylight as a competitive game, is that uh, you don't want to punish the players that are in the match for the person that left if that person leaves right away, right? So in many co competitive games or games where you are PvPing, if someone leaves right away, they allow everyone else to leave because the game is effectively over, right? So you are still allowing that game to end without punishing everyone. But that doesn't really exist in Dead by Daylight. So you have situations where they see a nurse or they see a killer they don't like and they just quit and they leave and they get out of the game and they're done. And I think that can ruin the experience for everyone else involved. The killer has loses all points for that person, right? They can't down them. They can't hit them. They can't stop their gen regression. They can't uh, kill them and put them on hook. So they don't get any points for that. And in many cases, sometimes with players leaving, if like two survivors leave, the killer can't even rank up anymore because there aren't enough points available in the match, but the match has to go on. I think that uh, that situation. Now, this is something that's prevalent in all PvP games. It's It doesn't really have a very perfect solution, but I think that it, it is quite prevalent in, in DBD, especially in a game where there's you need you have three teammates and one of them's gone, right? Or the killer DCs and the match ends um, it's something that is a little more prevalent in uh, in DBD. And then the final topic that I want to talk about before we round out this video, I don't want to make it too long, is uh, the idea of um, encouraged selfishness. Um, this is something that is core to the to a game's design. Uh, it is something that uh, matches well with um, how you want the game to be played, right? There has to be some degree of selfishness, right? If you're playing... Um, Say you're in like an arena, right? Or you're like in a PvP match in an MMO. Uh, you need to have some amount of selfishness in that you want to have self-preservation. You want to position yourself well. There are times where you have to allow your teammates to suffer a little bit so that you can get into a more opportune situation. Um, and that's part of the game. But I think that 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 is is more of like a playbook scenario. And I think DBD more than most PvP games actually has situations where helping your teammates is the wrong thing to do for your team, right? Um, there are situations where, like, for example, if a killer is tunneling and camping someone, the best counter to tunneling and camping is to completely ignore the person that is being com camped and tunneled. Focus on the generators, get the generators done, open the gates and leave, right? So you are encouraged, you are strategically benefited for allowing that person to suffer in their in their silence alone with no assistance and if you help them you're actually hurting your team which can be very painful and very punishing um and i think that idea of having personal selfishness personal resources versus team resources creates a rift between the player base there are some people that uh play with team resources in mind right so if you're injured and you're on death hook and and i'm a survivor that hasn't been hooked yet i may run in and take a hit for you when you're being chased because I have more personal resources available, right? I have more hook states uh, Then the team can keep you alive. You can do generators. 
just more as a sense of a team play orient with my decision making so that I'm trying to make sure that you're in the game longer, right? But some people don't play that way. Some people say, well, you're injured, you're on death hook. I can just go do a gen. I don't want to put myself in harm's way. So I'm just going to let that happen. And again, this gets back to multiple games in one. Some people play Dead by Daylight like it's a survival horror game. Some people play it like it is an objective-based PvP game. Those two people end up in the same matches together. And those paradigms, those differences in ideology changes how the experience that they have in the game, right? So in that case, you know, if you could find a way to bring those people together that's beneficial, I think it can reduce some of the frustrations uh, about the game itself. Now, again, I'm not talking about the community, any of its uh, creators or players, the interactions between the people itself. I'm just talking about the game design itself overall on how it encourages players to play the game, the, the nooks and crannies of how that playbook manifests itself. Um, and those are just some ideas on how I thought, like if I were to be asked, you know, if I, if I was working on the team, I would be asked to try and reduce toxicity and Im improve player enjoyment in Dead by Daylight. These are the topics that I would look at and try to uh, address if I could. I think there's definitely a, a high paradigm decision to be made on whether you want DBD to be competitive or casual fun party game. I think as designed, Dead by Daylight is a party game. It's a fun party game. Um, it's something that you just jump in, you have fun with. Um, it's But then you have situations where they add in skill-based matchmaking, rank resets, uh, and then individual matchmaking, right? So you have these kind of things that encourage more competitive play, but the game itself isn't really fully in support of competitive play, right? So there's definitely some weirdnesses that come out of that. But what do you think? Do you think Dead by Daylight is a game that's best served as it is, right? It is the chaos and randomness that can happen in the game, something that's good for the game and is part of it um, that, that makes the game successful. And to behaviors credit, I would say that the reason they haven't changed too much about this is they have a product that works. It makes money, it grows, they can get new players. They, they can do collaborations with other IPs. They can pay their employees bills and salaries and health insurance, they can have a studio, they can keep making new content, right? So at a certain point, you have to wonder, like if I start messing with the core formula too much, do I kill the game, right? Like if I make the game very competitive, does it, does it start to die? If I make the game very casual, does it start to die? Is part of its success the interaction between um, having competitive and non-competitive in the same environment? Um, that's the question, right? So I think from them, that's probably why they haven't really directly address this it seems like they are now uh by doing you know they're kind of looking at maybe built in unbreakable they already put in um base kit borrowed time so they're kind of addressing some of the the camping and tunneling that kind of stuff uh but what do you think is dead by daylight toxic um is it a game that that uh needs to have anything addressed or not and if it were to be addressed how would you do it so that's it for today comment down below if you enjoyed yourself today leave a like down below you can support me and my work on patreon and view patreon exclusive content link in the description thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one